Nyquist, and Audacity. One of Audacity's real strengths is the fact that it can use plugins to add to its capabilities. Lots of Audacity users are confused about plugins and how they work, so I thought it might be useful to pull the cover back a bit. This installment is the first of three, so if you feel like there's more you want to know after this, stay tuned. You may be aware that Audacity supports several types of audio plugins, Nyquist on all platforms, plus Ladspa, LV2, and VST for Mac or Linux, and audio units on the Mac. But Audacity was one of the first DAWs to support plugins, adopting a programming language originally designed for creating sound generators. That language is Nyquist, which is a sort of a meta language built on top of the programming language called Lisp. For the trivia fans, Nyquist is named after Harry Nyquist, an engineer whose research in communications theory led to our fundamental understanding of the nature of waveforms. None of that information is necessary to use plugins, but it's useful to know that Audacity's strong suit is Nyquist. All the others are designed as generic plugins that can be used by a wide variety of DAW software, and we can use them in Audacity as well, though several are platform dependent, as noted. Installing plugins in Audacity has become a bit easier in recent versions, 2.32 and later, with the addition of a tool called Nyquist Plugin Installer. It's found under the Tools menu. It allows you to pick a Nyquist plugin, usually downloaded from a website, and Audacity handles the copying of that file to the appropriate place on your computer and making it available in the Plugin Manager. Prior to that, you had to copy the plugin file, which has an extension of .ny, into the appropriate folder on your computer. Just so you know, that folder is located as follows. Mac, Windows, and Linux. You may have guessed by these file paths that Audacity plugins are installed on a per-user basis. So if you share your computer with another Audacity user, you'll each have to install the plugins you want. Note, the exception to this is Linux, which allows you to install plugins in the slash USR slash share slash Audacity folder to make them available for all users. So let's install and enable a Nyquist plugin. I have chosen the DTMF Tones plugin. You can download it from this URL. You may know DTMF Tones as Touch Tones. That's the brand name AT&T gave them when push-button dialing replaced actual dials on telephones. Why would we need them for VO? A DTMF generator is awesome for creating IVR samples. So with the plugin downloaded, jump into Audacity and go into Tools, Nyquist Plugin Installer on the main menu. Use the Browse button to find the downloaded file, dtmf.ny, and click OK. Audacity will show you where the plugin has been installed. Now go into Tools, add Remove Plugins. Click on the New radio button at the top of the dialog box. This makes it easier to find the new plugin. Find DTMF Tones on the list, click on it, click on the Enable button, and click OK. Now go into the Generate menu in versions 2.3 and later, or the Effects menu in earlier versions. Find DTMF Tones there and click on it. The dialog box should appear, allowing you to specify the tones you want to generate. Note, if you're in the Generate menu, you'll notice the DTMF Generator option as well. This is built in to later versions of Audacity. Congratulations! Your first plugin installation is complete. You can now explore the wonderful world of Nyquist plugins for Audacity. Have fun!